Praise the Lord. How is everybody today? Um, I wanted to get back on to the subject of uh, King David. Uh, usurpation, not necessarily in a church, but God used those men of old. And they did have uh, sanctuaries, and David did dance before the Lord, and all of that. And um, they just didn't have what you would call a regular church. Um, they had uh, the courts, the temple, and, and whatnot. And they did sacrifices back then, of course. And um, I just wanted to get to, uh, you know, the rest of the story about what, how David usurpted his authority over God and over man. Um, actually, he usurpted his authority uh, over a woman because um, he was the king. And God didn't appreciate that at all. Uh, God didn't appreciate the fact that he took another man's wife, got her pregnant, killed the man, and still acted like he didn't do anything wrong. Uh, so God did not like that. And he said that the kingdom will be taken out of his son's hands. Even though it was put into his hands, God put the kingdom into Solomon's hands, but in the long run, um, it was taken away. And um, first of all, uh, you know, Solomon, um, or ac actually David, uh, after he had Uriah killed and, and all that, uh, he married uh, the woman, I believe her name was Bathsheba. He married her, and they had the child. But the child was sick. The child was sick. And, and David fasted, like, for seven days. And on the seventh day, the child died anyway. And so the people were, his servants was afraid to tell him. And David could see them talking and whispering and all that. And he says, uh, is the child dead? And they said, yes, he's dead. So David got up, washed himself, um, put clean clothes on, and started to eat, his, eat some supper, you know. And they wanted to know, why are you eating? Well, David said, um, why shouldn't I eat? He says, I can't go to the child. No, he says, the child's not going to come back to me, but I can go to the child. And so here he was saying, he said, well, I fasted just in case, you know, God would have mercy on me and keep the child alive. And he said, just in case. But since the child is gone, he says, I, the child can't come back to me, but I can go to the child. You know, because he was saying that one day he will die also. And then there was um, a priest there that came and told David what was going to happen because of the sin that he had committed. Uh, you know, whenever a person, uh, even a Christian, if they sin, it will be dealt with. God will deal with it. You will not get away with that sin. 
there's a price that you will have to pay for doing that. And David paid a great price. First of all, he lost his son. Secondly, there were three um, plagues that David had to choose from. And one was that uh, he would be chased by armies and whooped, beat down by men for three months. The other was a plague that would go throughout all the land and it would take the lives of different people for three days. And there was another, but I can't remember it right now. But anyways, David chose the three days because he said, I don't want to be put into the hand of a, a man. He says, I'd rather be put into the hands of God. And, and what happened? He, he Maybe he thought those three days was not going to be bad. But in those three days, over 70,000 people in the land of Israel died. It was a terrible, terrible death. And it was all because David couldn't keep it in his pants. Oh, well, actually, uh, a skirt. You know, they had some kind of a skirt. I don't know what they were called. But anyways, on the last video, I said that men had problems with women. And they were all womanizers. They were all womanizers. So, um, you know, this was uh, David. He usurped his, his authority over God and over the people that he was supposed to take care of. He usurped his authority over a woman, knowing that the woman couldn't say no if she even as she wanted to. And then we have Solomon. Okay, because Solomon, after David died, you know that David died of syphilis. He died of syphilis, uh, a venereal disease. Otherwise, if David would have been just, you know, I think he had a, maybe about 18 or so wives. That's all I counted. And um, I believe that 10 of his wives were not even, uh, had not even had sex with him. And they were like shut up in a building by themselves so that they wouldn't be able to go out and find husbands because they were David's wives and uh, they were kept in a home until they died. 10, never to know a man, never to bear children or anything. But anyways, um, and I believe if I counted right, David only had about 18 wives. Not as many as his son, Solomon, who had 900 wives and 300 concubines. That was a bit much. Because the man had to sleep sometime. And he had to eat sometime. And I know he couldn't have satisfied all those women. If he could, he he's he's a he was a good man then. Stupid, but a good man if he could uh, uh satisfy all those women. Yeah. But anyways, um Sol Solomon 
had usurped his authority over God because God told him, do not get involved with all these women. He said, don't, don't take any strange women to marry. He said, they will turn you. Well, Solomon didn't want to hear it. It's a matter of fact, God said, I warned him twice not to take these women. And he did it anyway. And then in his old age, Solomon began to get, um, you know, absent-minded and, uh, and all that. And the women that he had turned his heart from God, the wisest man on the earth. His heart was turned from God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The, the wisest man. That was a shameful thing that happened to King Solomon because he usurped his authority over God. And he refused to listen to the voice of God about these strange women. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So Solomon was the man that the kingdom was taken out of his hands. Okay, seven. Oh, earlier I said that Solomon had 900 wives and, and 300 concubines. Uh, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. That was correct right there. But they did turn his heart from God. Hallelujah. And it says that S Solomon knew the consequences of his deeds because he read the scrolls and the law before he married those women. And, of course, I told you that God warned him twice not to get involved with strange women. And he disobeyed God and he... Uh, like I said, had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Thank you, Jesus. And so uh, God gave Solomon every opportunity that he could to get him to come back to him. Uh, you know, God never leaves um, his people uh alone <clears throat> excuse me he always back then he warned the people and he warns us now if we are going to be getting into any trouble hallelujah and it's up to us to say whether we are going to stay with the lord or or do what we want to do because we do have free will And I'm not talking about in some type of a doctrine of a free will. I, I, I have to study up on that again or study up on that now because I've never heard a free will doctrine. All I heard is, is that all I'm saying is that you do have a choice. Jesus said, Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Will it be God or will it be man? Mammon. He said, you choose it. And, and then God said, I set before you life and death. He said that I set before you life or death. He says, choose life. He says, it's no secret. 
Choose life that you and your seed might live. Hallelujah. So he gives us choice. And I know that our steps are ordered by the Lord. Our steps are ordered by God. But you know, God is not going to lead you to vote. He will tell you to go vote, but he's not going to tell you who to vote for. That is up to you because you're on this earth. You have the laws of the land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then there was a time in the uh, last video I said that there, uh, men of God can't uh, lie, but you know they can. Men and women of God can lie, they can cheat, they can steal. And they are still known as men and women of God. Um, and, and still it would be a choice of whether you want to do that or not. Hallelujah. It's, it's nothing that, I mean, you know, you, it, it, it's not like you're, um, you're so, uh, 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 like a robot that you don't know who to follow or, what choices to make in the world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And here in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, it says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. God uh, will, he is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. When God was telling Solomon not to uh, take all those wives, God said that if you don't take that many wives, you will be able to uh, hang on to your faith. And they, and they just overpowered him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He will make a way for our escape. For our escape, he will make it make it so that we would be able to bear all of the temptations that are that come against us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God said he will never leave us nor forsake us. And these are words that came from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Their usurption in the church does not only belong to women. Men can also usurp their authority over God. And they can usurp their authority over the sheep by uh, putting... A uh, hard task on the flock, you know, and uh, telling them to come up with this much money and come up with that much. He is usurping his authority over the people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But God, he says that no temptation has has taken over anyone that has not been done in the past. 
Let me see. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is as common to man. The devil doesn't have new temptations. The devil doesn't have new ways to tempt a man. The same way he tempted Eve and Adam in the garden is the same way he tempts us. And, and God has made it a way for our escape. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, um, I'll be back with another part of usurpation against God and church. You be blessed and highly favored of the Lord as I also and blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Amen.